married to an entrepreneur is a very it's different than a person that gets a job every gets a paycheck every two weeks yes and yes. so uh, my actual niche is black women who okay. want to be married who want to learn who want to or are respecting their black man and they want to have a family unit the homeschooling living together international travel financial independence so I definitely, wow. you know, whatever she has, whatever product or service that she has that she wants to share, you know, to mm -hmm. or promote, however, you know, I can be of assistance, that is my pleasure, okay? I'm, yeah, I'm going to talk to her in about an hour or so. She's going to love that. Okay. Actually, uh, maybe less than an hour. Okay. Um, so, so yeah. Um, so, back to the four-hour long videos. I'm taking notes. Yeah, yeah, I, I couldn't do those, but... Fast forward to the future, I had to do those if I wanted to succeed because binary options was no longer an option for me, um, being that um, it wasn't regulated the way that uh, Spot Forex is. So, um, yeah, I um, went ahead and paid the 5000 to join Steve's program, official program, and um, it was just... Uh, the, the biggest game changer in all of my trading career. Absolutely 1000%. Um, this market maker methodology is, uh, is incredible. It is the playbook of the global banks. It is exactly what they do, um, how they do it. And um, I'm just honored to learn directly from the man who created it himself. And so I'm, I'm still a student um, of his methodology. Um, and, uh, it's also been incorporated into the Forex methodologies, methods that I teach myself. So, um, uh, you know, I've had a few hundred students over the years in terms of Forex have gone on to be very, very successful. Um, uh, one of my friends uh, who went into uh, trading uh, futures uh, is Ian Dunlap. Uh, he's also on my Facebook, and he is now, um, he took this vision and an idea that we came up with to create a program for the youth, um, and uh, he, over the last few years, um, in, the, in the last year or so specifically, he's taken that, materialized it, and now it's being introduced to uh, some schools around the U.S., and he's uh, touring around the U.S., speaking all over the country about investing. He's constantly on the news in uh, Houston, Texas. Um, he's uh, their, uh, one of their resident um, investment um, uh, guests that come on and speak about uh, investing. Um, he has been speaking with uh, Eric the Hip Hop Preacher. Um, he's just doing some amazing things, um, and his network is absolutely amazing. He's a sharp brother. He's very successful. He has a program called uh, Red Panda, um, where he teaches uh, how to trade futures and, and uh, options, I believe. And um, it's just doing phenomenal. And so he's just one example um, of what has come out of my trading journey. Because um, uh, if I remember at one point, he was like, oh, I don't know about this thing, man. But I just kept pushing him, kept pushing him, man. It's changed his life now. And so, um, uh, yeah, so I, I jumped into this market maker methodology. And I've been, uh, I've been teaching people uh, how to trade for a few years. And so... Um, once I took my sabbatical, so to speak, in uh, Africa and kind of got my spirit together, um, got back in tune with who I was and, and my future, um, because I, I've always dreamed of going to Africa. Even before coming to Africa, I would tell everybody, like, I'm going to live in Africa for two years. I thought it was going to be near Egypt and northern Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, and the opportunity came up, and I couldn't help but jump on it and take it. Yeah. And so um, uh, when I got there, uh, got to Zimbabwe, um, I was staying at the... Uh, uh, SG luxury uh, villas and um, I was always trading on my laptop and the property manager uh, a white South African lady named Meta amazing lady um, she uh, would always see me on my screen and my charts up on the screen like you know what are you doing and I started explaining it to her she was like yeah the doctor is gonna want to meet you and I'm thinking like you know who's the doctor and uh, turns out it's this, you know, pretty much almost a billionaire who owns, you know, the place I'm staying at. And um, I didn't notice at the time. I had no idea he was wealthy like this. And so um, he came uh, about a week later and he's like, uh, I've been looking for someone like you for about five years. 
um, and I've been wanting to learn Forex for about five years. Can you teach me? And I'm like, sure, no problem. And he kept offering to pay me, and I'm like, no, I'm not going to take your money. I, you know, I'm just, I'm staying at your place. You know, it wasn't for free, but I was staying at your place. And I was like, you know, no problem. I'll teach you. And so um, that act of uh, giving to him first has been multiplied maybe 10,000 times. Um, the man has just continually given to me since then. We've become best friends, pretty much brothers. Um, uh, I found out much later that he's basically almost a billionaire. Um, and um, he sent me and my wife on an all-expense-paid safari uh, fa after I started, like, the first month or so of teaching him Forex. He was like, this is amazing. You know, um, I want to pay you back. I'll send you to Wange. And he sent us to Victoria Falls and uh, mm. Wange for about uh, 10 days, I believe. And um, we just had an amazing experience. Um, uh, just awesome. And so uh, he, he would always tell me about investing in Zimbabwe and uh, open up different opportunities to me. And um, he said, hey, uh, I know you're going back to the U.S. soon, but if you come back to Zimbabwe, I'll make you a wealthy man. I said, uh, and so, um, you know, that year of coming back to the U.S. was when I lost all of that money, that 96 grand. Oh, and so I, was, okay. I wasn't I was supposed to be gone from Africa for a year. I was only supposed to be gone about four months. Okay. But losing all that money oh, okay. pushed, ev yeah, pushed everything back about oh, okay. a year. Okay. But I just stayed dedicated to making sure that I was going to get back to Africa no matter what. Okay. And so... Um, I popped up on him. He didn't even know I was in Africa. And so, uh, so uh, got the kids ready, um, you know, got them situated for homeschooling and uh, was like, hey, you know, it, it's time to go. And so um, we, we put everything in storage, put our vehicles in storage, um, you know, paid them off pretty much um, and uh, was like, hey, let's go. So we got back to Africa, got situated. And then um, I popped up on him. And I was like, I'm back. <laughs> and so, um, uh, yeah, we just got back to work and, um, yeah, he, we were just, uh, we were having a lesson one day and um, I was like, Hey doc, you know anything about cannabis? And he was like, uh, no, a little bit about it, but not that much. I was like, have you ever been interested in it? He was like, yes, but I don't know much about it. I was like, um, didn't you say that you picked up a, a farm um, from, foreclo for, from foreclosure? He picked up a farm for like a hundred thousand bucks that was worth like one point six million, Gum Tree Farm. Yeah. And so um, this was in twenty fifteen. He picked it up, and uh, he's not a farmer; he's an investor, so he never did anything with it. <laughs> so it was just sitting there. And um, he's like, "Yeah, I got that one." Um, and then I have another one that's about the, the initial farm was seventy four hectares. Then the other farm was uh, 16, no, 800 hectares. And so um, he's like, yeah, um, I'm not doing anything. I was like, uh, what do you think about uh, growing cannabis? Because the Zimbabwean government had announced that they were going to legalize medicinal marijuana. And so, and this was out the blue. Like, we had no plans to do any of this. And so I was just like, hey, uh, what do you think? I've, all, I've, I've already had a business in cannabis in my uh, previous life. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, I wouldn't mind, you know, getting into it from a legal perspective. And so um, I was like, what do you think about uh, us growing some cannabis and uh, exporting some cannabis? And he was like, let's do it. He was like, all right, I'll give you a farm. And so I was like, OK. And so um, I did some research, uh, started getting my ducks in a row, um, aligned myself with the attorneys and advocates who uh, were behind the whole push to legalize cannabis uh, or medicinal marijuana in Zimbabwe. They're um, on my team. Um, and so uh, just got myself aligned to do to do this. And um, yeah, um, he gave me the farm. And um, <laughs> And so now, um, not only are we going to be doing cannabis, but we're doing uh, aloe. Uh, aloe mm -hmm. grows uh, naturally in Zimbabwe. Uh, we're doing um, uh, patches of fruit. We're doing moringa. Um, we're also doing um, some citrus. Uh, we're going to be doing peanuts. Um, we're going to be doing um, so it's several several um, agricultural um vegetative efforts that we're going to be doing on the farm. Um, but of course, cannabis is the big money maker. Um, also, uh, another black American, he's on my Facebook, his name is Henry Jenkins. Um, he was already in Zimbabwe when I got there. 
this brother uh, is from uh, Alabama. And he made his way to Zimbabwe back in around 2010, 2011, um, trying to trade gold. And fast forward, he was able to acquire Rothschild land. Oh, whoa. Yes. How, mm, that, by the way, that's a, that's a fascinating, I mean, name and I'm you sure should hear story. That, you, should, you should hear that story sometime. Wow, um, okay. I, which currently sits on about $6.2 billion in gold deposits. So this brother um, has created his own crypto token um, uh, from that. Um, and uh, I was blessed enough to be brought into the fold of his operation. Um, this is what you see on my page when I showed the, uh, the videos and the photos of the gold mining operation right, and everything right, like that. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, I mean, I never met, I, and I, I hunted this brother down. You know, I was I was looking to get into gold myself um, because I, I I was literally traveling all around Zimbabwe from, I mean, you name it. I was traveling all around Zimbabwe trying to get into gold, and it's a very dangerous business to oh, get yeah, into. I'm sure. Um, and uh, being a, a, a light, they call me colored. They call us colored. Light skinned people in Zimbabwe are called colored. Okay. okay. Um, and uh, yeah, or white. They even call us white. Like yeah. I, I, I used to get into. I, I couldn't stand that shit. Um, but yeah, uh, but that's just the culture there because right. of colonialism. Yeah. So anyway, um. I hunted this brother down on YouTube. I could only find one obscure video of him on YouTube. And then I went hunting this man down and I finally found him. And, uh, I, I, I was like, and he was very skeptical because he's, you know, he's been kidnapped. He's been all kind of stuff oh, there, you know, Jesus. um, they tried to extort them, you name it, uh, because of how valuable this claim was that he was able to get his hands on. Right. Okay. And so, um, he was very weary, and I'll tell you that story some other time about how he went about meeting me, like six in the morning in the darkness, you know, watching me from before. Like it was, <laughs> it was, uh, it was so funny. Um, but he's a he's an excellent brother, excellent, excellent, excellent brother. And uh, I'm gonna be uh, when I come back to the states in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in several weeks, gonna be working to raise some money, um, some investment capital to help expand the mine because it's very profitable, but the margins are. Going and um, uh, he, they're making profit. There's uh, there's about 70 people that work and live at the mine, so it's a big operation. Um, but it can't be expanded fast enough to uh, access the deposits that are actually at the site. Because right now, only about 15 or 20 percent of the site has even been tapped into, and it's already valued at 6.2 billion in gold deposits. So it's an amazing opportunity, and uh, we're still looking to raise money and uh, expand as fast as possible because uh, the equipment, of course, is six-figure or more equipment per piece. You know, um, the whole site had to be developed from electricity being ran over two miles, everything. Everything was done in-house. So it's it, this phenomenal brother, phenomenal brother. Um, so that's the goal. Um, the cannabis uh, is going very well. Um, we're looking... To get, because they, they've only began granting a couple official licenses, mm -hmm. but we're in the pipeline. Um, and I uh, got some heavy hitters on my side. Solomon's uh, associates are the people who are the gatekeepers for um, this effort. Um, he, he's an incredible man. His name is Solomon Guru Mantanhu. I'll, I'll send you that officially. You need to look him up. He's a very, very, I mean, his brother sends dozens of Africans to the U.S. on scholarships. Um, he sponsors 